Put it in context for us, because it's sounding like the market was right all along. Well, it doesn't take much to make the market happy, and the Fed didn't have to do much today to reinforce the market's belief that uh, we're now in a new regime. Mm -hmm. One word change in the statement where they said any possible <laughs> rate moves instead of uh, just the possible rate moves, and then they added one additional cut to 2024, but that was enough to tell the markets that it is a new regime now. And so the markets were essentially right. It's interesting that 12 days ago, Jay Powell had completely a different take on things, and now he's uh, done a 180 and reversed and looked very happy up there. Yeah, well, you say the market was right, and yet the market still seemed like it had some repricing it needed to do today. Off the back of this and Chairman Powell's remarks, you saw the two-year Treasury yield dropping 30 basis points, another big rally in stocks that are approaching record highs. And when we know the Fed is trying to achieve tighter financial conditions, Mike, mm. yeah. Did the, did the markets effectively get a present that means the Fed ultimately might have to take away the punch bowl at some point because it's well, reversing I suppose, its Well, I suppose you could draw that uh, logical conclusion, except that the Fed doesn't seem to be caring as much about financial conditions as they did before. They seem to be, at this point, almost taking a soft landing victory lap and saying, we did it and... We're now in good shape, and now we can think about cutting. They did not tell us when they're going to cut, and they did not tell us really by how much they're going to cut. Remember, the dot plot is 19 individual forecasts, as Jay Powell kept saying. But they did give the impression that the regime's changed. We're now looking at uh, rate cuts and that uh, interest rates are probably going to go down in the coming year. Now, the market's always have to overdo everything and overreact to everything. I would imagine <laughs> that some of what we saw today will come back, depending on the economic data we get. But in general, we're going to be seeing this bias toward the downside. Well, you wonder the political reaction here. The stakes are awfully high for Joe Biden. Uh, Julie, fine. the timing here could be incredible for him in a good way. We've been talking about uh, high prices, the impact politically of inflation, and why his approval numbers are so low for months and months. As he enters the actual year of his potential re-election, though, it looks like stars may be aligning. If we're in a world in which the Fed is cutting rates here, markets are liking it, even if overreacting to Michael McKee's point, that's a win for Joe Biden, isn't it? Not necessarily for president, but in general, politically speaking. This is a big win for him politically because, as you know, the message on inflation, he has had trouble selling it. Well, here you'll actually have something tangible. You may have lower interest rates. Getting a house could be cheaper. Your groceries could be cheaper. So with all that going on, that works in the president's favor, Joe. Well, Mike, I guess it becomes a question of how quickly that really transmits to the, transmits to the real economy. If you have the Fed cut... 25 basis points, you're still going to be looking at a really high mortgage rate. We aren't necessarily talking about everything going back to a pre-COVID norm here. No, it's not going to go back to pre-COVID, and people are going to have to get used to the idea that rates are going to be permanently higher. Uh, mortgage rates are probably going to be in the 4 to 5 percent range uh, at best when they get uh, all the rate cuts done. So it's just a question of when people think they're going to be low enough to start buying houses. But the idea that rate cuts are coming and that mortgage rates are going to go down and that credit card rates are going to go down, even if they go down a little bit, is good publicity for them. What really helps a president in an election year is the performance of the economy in the first two quarters. Mm -hmm. And so coming now, this is good news for Joe Biden. And remember, George H.W. Bush was in a similar situation. Alan Greenspan did not cut rates until hmm. just before the election. <laughs> and Bush always blamed him for his yeah. loss, saying, I appointed him. He disappointed me. How about that? So it's not too late for Joe Biden would go the conventional wisdom here. Potential upside we're talking about, Julie, uh, for this administration versus potential downside we saw today outside the Capitol building. We keep hearing the question, where is Hunter? Well, he showed up here today in Washington, D.C., and Hunter Biden spoke from the Capitol as he refused to give a deposition to Republican lawmakers. Here he is. In the depths of my addiction... I was extremely irresponsible with my finances. But to suggest that is grounds for an impeachment inquiry is beyond the absurd. It's shameless. There is no evidence to support the allegations that my father was financially involved in my business because it did not happen. 
Interesting maneuver here, Julie. He referred to MAGA, and he talked specifically by name about the chairs of the Oversight and Judiciary Committees, who he says have essentially ruined his and his family's lives through the process here. Is this a good thing uh, for Joe Biden to have him come out and, and, and speak publicly like that with, with political references, naming names today on the Hill? Well, I mean, first of all, I mean, he's making it political as well now. There's been all this talk of politics. He's making it political as well. I mean, I'd be very surprised if the White House didn't know exactly what he was planning to say today. But again, this yeah. is not something that the president wants to deal with on the campaign trail. He doesn't want to deal with talking about an impeachment inquiry. He doesn't want to be talking about his son. So this put it right in the spotlight. However, what Hunter Biden did do today is said, I'm ready to talk to you. I just want to do it in a public forum where now you have lawmakers talking about holding him in contempt if they don't do him yeah. in, don't do this in the forum that they want. So really here it's going to be who blinks first, what happens, but this is something that could end up not looking good for either the Democrats or the Republicans. Yeah, Julie, to your point, the White House press secretary, Corrine Jean-Pierre, did say that uh, they knew what Hunter was going to say on the Hill today. And Jim Jordan and James Comer, the chairs of the House uh, Oversight and Judiciary Committee, have said they are going to launch those contempt proceedings. On the subject of Congressman Jim Jordan, though, he took note specifically of something Hunter Biden said, really latched on to it. Just take a listen to what he said this morning. He said his father was not financially involved in the business. And I think that qualifier, the word financially, is, is important because, once again, it shows another change, another change in the story. First, it was no involvement. Then, no, I never, never talked to anyone. And then we find out about the dinners, the meetings, the phone calls, and everything else. Now it's, oh, he wasn't involved in the business financially. I think that is important. Julie, if you're the president's son, the president himself, or the president's re-election campaign, is it as much about the suggestion, the question, as it is about the ultimate answers? Is it not in their interest to just expediently get this wrapped up so they can't be implying things about you? Well, I mean, it's certainly in their interest to not be answering questions about this all the time on the campaign trail. And I think that has something to do with the fact that Hunter Biden is saying, here I am, bring me in front of people, and I want to say this all publicly. I, this is not something that you want to talk about on the campaign trail. However, another impeachment inquiry is not something Republicans may want to answer questions about either. So this creates problems for both sides as we get closer to Election Day.